Hello, I'm Robin Sewell, and I do the tours here at St. Anne's. And today we're going to look at the contributions of the youngest member of the Group of Seven, Franklin Carmichael. Now, Carmichael was born in 1890 in Aurelia and didn't come to Toronto until he was about 20 to study art at OCA. Sometime after, he was lucky enough to get a job as an apprentice at Grip Limited and he was paid $2.50 a week, and he was lucky enough to meet some of the future Group of Seven members. Now, he must have really impressed them with his skill because it wasn't long before they were inviting him to go on their sketching trips up north. Now, in 1914, Carmichael went off to Belgium to study art at the school where Frederick Varley went but because of the outbreak of World War I, he came back to Toronto where he shared a studio space with Tom Thompson. And uh, people who looked at Carmichael's early paintings have said that he was greatly influenced by the paintings of Tom Thompson. Now in 1915, he married his childhood sweetheart, uh, Ada Lillian Went, and later on they had a daughter. Now all this time, uh, Carmichael was working as a commercial artist and he became an expert at wood blocks and linoleum printing. And I think uh, you can really see that this kind of skill translates to bold colors and strong shapes. Now Carmichael was in his early 30s when the decoration of St. Anne's was begun and he was asked to contribute two paintings. We've already looked at the Adoration of the Magi back on Epiphany and across the chancel on the other side we have another one of Carmichael's paintings which provides quite a contrast. Uh, the Adoration of the Magi is a very quiet contemplative work but the entry into Jerusalem is full of excitement and drama. Now in this story we see Christ riding into Jerusalem on a donkey to fulfill the prophecy that said that the king would come riding on a donkey. And we have people all around. They've ripped off branches from the palm trees and they're waving them and shouting Hosanna. And they've even taken their cloaks and laid them across the road for, for the procession to walk on. It's a very exciting moment and here we see just the barest hint of the city in the background. Uh, the focus isn't on the buildings at all. And all of the excitement of the moment is conveyed in the faces and the hands of the people all around Jesus. But we never for a moment lose sight of the important focal point, which is Jesus. And not only does he have his beautiful golden halo, but notice how the palm branches curve around, framing him. Now, I think that Carmichael was very pleased with this painting, and it's actually one of the few works in the church that has been signed. And on a sunny afternoon, when the light comes through the windows in just the right spot, you can clearly see his signature as it stretches out in front of the kneeling person in green's foot. I do think he was very proud of this painting, and we here at St. Anne's are very proud of it as well. Join us next week as we look at the works of Frederick Varley. Hi, my name is Sam. Uh, I work at the Michael Canadian Art Collection, and this is an artwork by Franklin Carmichael. Uh, I particularly like this artwork because this is when we think about the Group of Seven, we think about traditional landscapes, you know, you get your trees, you get your rocks, you get your rivers, your mountains, and you get your clouds. Now what I find particularly interesting about this particular painting is that when you look at the clouds here, you can envision the sort of mythical being, or a bird or, or a phoenix or some sort. And uh, you can see that perhaps maybe Carmichael was experimenting with something a little bit more abstract in this work. Uh, abstraction is not something you particularly associate with the Group of Seven, but it's interesting to see that this is perhaps where he was moving towards in his career. This is called Farm Halliburton. It was painted in the 1940s, and we know Carmichael was reading literature about agriculture at the time. Uh, you can see that this particular painting has a very large tree, which sort of dominates the painting. 
And you can see the farmhouses here in the back, but they're almost an afterthought. The painting seems to be more about the trees. Now, my theory here is that he was reading about how, the, how nature sort of dominates what man tries to set up on the land. And this tree is almost like a large mythical monster, kind of like a Godzilla figure here, looming over this farm. And I think it represents how, you know, we can't completely control nature. Of course, this is all speculation, but you can read what you will into it.